everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy so what day. I hope that you're not freezing in your neck of the woods um, because we are. <laughs> and it seems like the whole country, well, the parts that have winter, um, you know, we're, we're cold, right? We're cold. So I still have my robe close by the one I wore on New Year's Eve in case I need to bundle up today. But at any rate, I hope you're all having a wonderful start to your day. Today on So What, we're going to be talking about in the hoop applique. In the hoop applique embroidery designs, to be more specific, how to, you know, build those designs in the hoop of our embroidery machine. So please bring your questions, comments, likes, shares, loves, all of those good things because I have a great giveaway today that will allow you, if you are the lucky winner, to try out some applique embroidery designs if you have never done so. Doing applique in the hoop of your embroidery machine is so quick and easy and accurate. Um, it's a great way to do satin stitch applique, uh, you know, professionally, right? Your end result is done by your machine. So if you have an intricate design, let's say a teapot, which is what I'm going to be showing you today, your machine does all of that hard work for you, right? It turns all the corners, um, it makes your stitches, um, you know, placed together perfectly and it's, it just looks so nice. And you can make a lot of these sort of assembly line style, I like to say, if you are making gifts. So Valentine's Day is coming up. It's right around the corner. And this is a great project that you can do sort of assembly line style. So you can line up all of your towel blanks. You can line up all of your applique fabrics. You can do one right after the other and create lots of gifts in a fraction of the time that it would take you to do applique just with your regular standard sewing machine. Now, of course, you could obviously do that as well, but I'm gonna be giving you tips for using your embroidery machine today. So keep those questions and comments coming. I will do some Q and A's throughout the demo today so we can address any questions about Sulky products or about the project that I will be um, showing you today. Now, all of the how-tos that I'm gonna go through are currently on the Sulky blog. So you don't have to take notes or write anything down. You can refer to that blog post to get the entire tutorial and all those great tips and tricks and links to products that I'm gonna be talking about today. I also link to all the products in the description of today's post. So if you're not seeing the entire description, click that little see more button and it will pop up for you so you can see all the links to everything I'm talking about today, especially those really cute designs. All right, before we get started, I want to remind everyone that today is the day for the Posh Project and Tech Trapper webcast with Cheryl Cusack. I'm going to be talking about that at the end of today's show, but be sure that you are registered and ready to go because we will be going live at 2 p.m. Eastern time at sewingonline.sulky.com. Cheryl's going to join us and she's going to take us through this awesome project. You guys are going to absolutely love making this. It's a really cool take on a sort of modernized briefcase of sorts that holds lots of goodies. So be sure that you're registered. I also linked to the registration area for the webcast in the description of today's post. So you can easily click on over and sign up for free for today. You'll be getting a free class from Cheryl. It's so amazing. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'll be talking about that a little bit more as we go along. So to get started, I'm glad you're all saying good morning, good afternoon, and hello. That's fantastic. Make sure you are commenting, liking, sharing today's post because our giveaway for one lucky viewer doing those things is our cup of tea machine embroidery palette. 
So if you've never heard me talk about a palette before, this means you're getting the thread that goes along with an embroidery collection and the designs are also included. So when you purchase a palette, you're getting a great value because not only are you getting all the thread that you need for that design collection, you're also getting the design collection included with purchase. So this is a $49.99 value and I will be giving this away to one lucky viewer who's watching live here on uh, Facebook or on our YouTube channel. So this is the design uh, that I'm showcasing on our tea towel today. I used the filled with love design that is so cute. It features this great teapot um, in the hoop applique design. Here she is right here. It says filled with love, has a lot of great little hearts on it and it's so cute. It would be perfect for Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, birthdays. Um, if you have a friend who really loves a cup of tea um, or maybe you're going to have high tea somewhere and this could commemorate the occasion, really cute. So all the designs in this collection are in the hoop applique designs. That means that the machine is going to stop periodically throughout the design in between thread changes to signal that you need to place your applique fabrics, then stitch around them, cut them away. So there are multiple steps and some of these have two different fabrics or even three different fabrics or more that you will be layering throughout the uh, design process so that you have a really beautiful uh, in the hoop applique end result. Now, you can use solid fabrics, which is what I am showcasing today because I really wanted the lettering and those other um, cute floral motifs to really pop. Sometimes when you choose a print, especially a larger scale print, those thread elements can get lost. So I went with all solid fabrics here, but you could also, especially with this teapot design, since it's a little bit larger um, surface area of that base fabric for your applique, you could go with a minimal print, something with small motifs that kind of um, complement those florals that are featured in the design. All right, so here are all of the pretty threads that are included in that thread palette. So you can purchase this design collection with these threads as the palette, or you can purchase the design collection um, on its own if you just want those designs, or you can purchase each design separately. So individually, you can pick and choose the designs that you wanna feature on your tea towels. Um, we've got a lot of great tea towel blanks at sulky.com. So this towel is one of them. It has this hem stitching detail you see the hem stitching there? So you can kind of see through all of that, those pretty um, uh, fibers. And then it's trimmed with this great pinkish color. Uh, these also come in other colors. So there's a pretty green that would be great for St. Patrick's Day coming up. There's black, there's um, yellow. There's a lot of different colors you can choose from for your towels. And what I like about these towels is you know, sometimes you get a tea towel and it's huge. So putting your embroidery design on it, it makes it a little difficult to fold up the towel and kind of display it because you have so much bulky towel um, behind it. Now, those towels are great for actual use, though. Um, you know, they're great for dishes, washing hands, that type of things. You have a lot of towel to work with that is not compromised by your pretty design that you are displaying. So I do like those large tea towels as well. But for something like this, especially a gift, this is a really nice size towel, good quality linen blend, and it just folds over one time so you can display it nicely and hang it, that type of thing. This would be so cute packaged up with a nice package of teas, some honey sticks, maybe even a little teapot. So it makes a really great um, accompaniment to a larger gift, and it's just great to gift it on its own. 
So just a nice little Valentine if you want to send those out to your friends. We also have some really great zipper pouch blanks that you could also use to showcase these great showcase these great designs. These have a colored um, little hanging loop or holder loop, and these come in green, black, blue, um, lots of other different colors as well for you to choose from. And these are a jute, and they're lined with kind of like a, oh, what would you call this? Like a plasticky, vinyl-ish um, kind of coating so that you can stitch through this jute, and that gives you more surface area for your stitches to grab onto. And these have a really cute end result as well, a little... T saying we have one that says best teas forever. That would be really cute on here. And you could put all of your teas and little honey sticks and little accessories inside the bag. And that would also make a very cute gift. So I love working with blanks when we are doing gift giving because it makes it really quick and easy, like I said, to make multiples of these and gift them to a bunch of friends and maybe you choose one design for each friend so that they all get sort of a similar gift, yet it's different and personalized for them. And that's what I absolutely love about machine embroidery. You can add their name to this as well, or initial, or if maybe you have a sewing group and you all call yourself something, you know, the Stitch and Divas or something cute like that, you could personalize your little zipper pouches with that as well and have your little tea design and that would be really cute. All right, so for this towel, I like to use Sulky Fabrisolvi when I am uh, embroidering a tea towel. And the reason for that is the Fabrisolvi washes away completely when our embroidery is complete. Now, I have also used Sulky Tear Easy, and that gives me a great end result. But a lot of the times with these more intricate designs that have um, smaller motifs in them, it becomes kind of a bear to try and get the Tear Easy to pull away nice and cleanly from those stitches. You know, you've got to get out your tweezers or small snips or something to get in those little areas. And since we are working with towels, that are blanks, you know, they don't have a backing to them. So we're going to see the wrong side. So I like to choose a wash away stabilizer that's going to be completely removed once the stitching is complete. And I will talk about that after our stitching is done. So for uh, the Fabrisolvi, it's rather lightweight. It's kind of a fabric-like stabilizer. But like I said, it's kind of made up of these like um, particles that are going every which way. So when you spray that with um, like a kitchen sprayer um, with your lukewarm water or under a running faucet, all of those little particles kind of separate and just disappear completely in the water. Then you can dry it, give it a little press from the wrong side, and you have no trace of stabilizer. So I am going to use two layers of the Fabrisolvi for this towel. And that's because the weight of the towel is heavier than just one layer of Fabrisolvi. And I wanted to make sure that I had enough uh, stabilizer to support those fabric layers that I'm adding during the applique process. So that's why I use two layers instead of one. So here I have my two layers of Fabrisolvi in the hoop. And no, I'm not uh, putting my towel in the hoop as well. The reason for that is because I went with a little bit larger hoop. I chose the five by seven size of this design. There's a four by four design, a five by seven design, and a nine by 10 design. Those sizes are for the recommended hoops, not for the design itself. So when you're looking at what size is the design actually? That is at sulky.com and it will come with your stitch sequence chart 
that you always want to pull up. That is a PDF that comes with your design files that tells you which color of thread you're using for which part of the design. Sometimes if you're using a third-party software to open the design or personalize it further with a name or monogram, sometimes those thread colors can get lost in that translation when you resave it to your thumb drive or, you know, use a cloud thing, use the cloud to get it to your machine. Sometimes those thread colors can get kind of wonky. So that's why we always include a PDF stitch sequence chart that you need to refer to to make sure that you're using the right color for which portion of the design. It becomes more important to use your stitch sequence chart when you're working with a design that has in the hoop applique steps or freestanding lace or something like that where you're building um, your design in the hoop um, or an in the hoop design like a small pouch project or a scissor case or something that incorporates a zipper. You need to know at which point you're placing which fabric and where. So those directions will be on that stitch sequence chart for you um, in amongst all of your thread color changes as well. Okay, so we've got our stabilizer, we've got our stitch sequence chart, and the reason I'm not hooping this towel is because, first off, the linen weave of this is rather open. And I thought that if I tried to hoop this towel, those um, that open weave would kind of want to separate around my inner hoop ring. And they're not going to bounce back um, and go back together after embroidery is complete. So you, you would have that problem with an open weave fabric, such as this kind of linen towel blend, or a knit fabric as well. So there are lots of fabrics that you don't need to hoop with the stabilizer. What we're going to do instead is do hoopless embroidery, which means we are hooping only the stabilizer, and then we're going to attach or adhere our item or fabric to the stabilizer once it's been hooped. That will secure our item to the stabilizer and ensure that it's nice and flat and going to accept the embroidery without stretching or hoop burn. Okay, so now we have our stabilizer is all hooped and we need to attach our towel to it. So I like to use Sulky KK2000. That is our temporary spray adhesive. I apply it to the item, wrong side, as well as to the Fabrisolvi that's in the hoop in this case. That gives me a really nice strong bond because I have the KK2000 in both places and then I'm sticking those together. That kind of eliminates the need for basting stitches. Our embroidery machines, um, some of the older models do not have this option, but all the newer ones have the option of basting in the hoop, and usually you have two choices. You can baste around the inner hoop perimeter, or you can baste around the design perimeter. So two options there. If you want to choose basting in the hoop, you certainly can, but with this open weave fabric, I didn't want to have needle holes pushing those open fibers far apart, and then you know, have it be a little bit difficult to recover from those needle penetrations in the fabric. So instead of doing a based in the hoop function, I did KK2000 on both the stabilizer and the wrong side of the towel. Then I centered my design area and placed it in the hoop. You'll notice that I don't have any design markings showing on here. I actually used my white sulky chalk uh, pencil to mark the center cross marks in the middle of my towel so that I knew where to position the towel, where I wanted the design so that I could place it on the hoop properly and make sure that my design was centered. It's just that you cannot see it in this image because I use a white chalk pencil to do that and I could see it up close even though it's on a white towel but you do you and you do the 
cross marks or using a template or using a placement sticker. However you like to uh, make sure that your embroidery placement is correct, you do that and then get your towel on that stabilizer before putting it on the hoop. All right, so now we're going to begin the embroidery design steps. And the very first step of this particular design, that cup of tea, or excuse me, the filled with love design, is your placement stitch for your applique fabric. So prior to putting this fabric down, the machine stitched the outline of the teapot. That shows me where I need to position my first applique fabric. So you wanna make sure that your fabric is larger than your placement stitching and that you have enough room that you will be able to easily trim that fabric beyond the stitching line. Sometimes I've gotten a little too close for comfort on an applique design and then it becomes a little bit harder to sort of lift up that fabric edge and get my applique scissors in there to trim it up nice and tidy next to those stitches. So keep that in mind. You wanna, you know, this is a great stash buster project to dive into your scrap bin and find those pieces of fabric that will fit those applique areas. You just wanna make sure to give yourself a little, you know, little bit of a border so that it's easier for you to trim that up. So again, I chose a solid fabric for my teapot that coordinated really well with that fabric along the lower edge of the towel. Um, I will mention that the teapot outline is this really pretty kind of seafoam green color. Um, let me see if I can point it out to you. It is the green that's in the upper left corner of the thread palette image. So. You can either use a fabric color that matches your towel border or use a fabric color that really goes well with that green so that your outline stitches blend in. My outline stitches really pop because they don't match that first applique color. And again, you could definitely use a print, but I would go with a minimal print, um, either a super large print so you can um, kind of fussy cut it so that your lettering um, is really visible and you can read it well, or a very, very small minimal print so that the letters still pop off of that fabric. All right, so after those placement stitches, we will place our fabric down over those using a little bit more of the KK2000 just to secure it in place and make sure that while the needle is stitching and the foot and the hoop is moving around, um, nothing happens to that fabric and we don't have any, um, you know, bunching up or puckering while the design is doing its thing. So now you can see we have our tacking stitches. The tacking stitches do just that. They tack that applique fabric to the towel and now we can trim away the fabric close to those tacking stitches. So for this, I carefully remove um, the hoop from the machine. Now you may have a machine that has a setting or a button that will move the hoop closer to you so that you can easily trim away that fabric and then press that button again. Your hoop will slide back into position and you can move forward with the satin stitch edging of your applique. If you don't have that function, you can just carefully remove your hoop um, from the machine and use your applique scissors, which are these duck bill scissors here. They allow you to get very close to that fabric or to that stitching edge without piercing the fabric beneath it. And that's why it's got this curved edge to it. It makes it really easy to get in there, especially if you have an arthritic thumb like I am starting to get. <laughs> um, it makes it really easy to get in there without piercing through any of your upper or lower fabrics um, as you go around that teapot. 
And I did want to show you this next picture because there are a lot of, um, well, here's the scissors cutting into that, but do you see all of those little detail stitches along the teapot lower edge there? It's really difficult to get into those little kind of nooks and crannies of the design. So you can also use a curved tip kind of squeezer. I love to have these for clipping my jump threads because again, you have this curved edge going up and they're very, very pointy and very small and you can just squeeze along and clip your jump threads and also get into those little corners and points to make sure that you're trimming just up against the stitching without snipping through it. And I will say, you know, I've done plenty of applique designs where I accidentally slip, uh, cut through the tacking stitches. But you know what? The next step is going to be our satin stitch edging. So if you accidentally uh, cut through some of those tacking stitches by, by sheer accident, that area is all going to be covered up in the next uh, stitching sequence when the satin stitches are applied. So don't stress too much if that accidentally happens. The only thing you would need to worry about is if you accidentally cut your fabric beyond that stitching line and kind of go into the teapot itself, then you would need to rip out your tacking stitches and redo that fabric applique portion uh, to make sure that you don't have a slit going into that fabric that is not going to be covered by the satin stitching. So that would really be uh, your only concern with clipping too far into those tacking stitches. So here you can see my teapot is pretty rough around the edges. I'm gonna enlarge this just to show you. You see how I could not get very close with my applique scissors along those curved edges and along uh, those little um, sort of jagged edges along the right side of the teapot. So that's where I went in again with my curved tip squeezers and cleaned up that edge a little bit more. Now your satin stitches are going to go beyond the tacking stitch edge, but you don't want those little hairy kind of, you know, pokey outy <laughs> edges of your fabric um, poking through the satin stitch edge. So I wanted to show you that because that was as close as I could get with the applique scissors and I still needed to go in there with those pointy scissors and just do some cleanup. So then it's just a matter of completing the design. With this one, there's only one applique step and it happens at the beginning, then the rest of the design is added with thread. So all of those yellow stitches, those are all, that is all thread um, for the top of the teapot and then you have your cute little dots, all the floral detailing, and it comes together really, really simply. And it ends up being so adorable. And now it's a matter of getting our towel out of the hoop. So we will remove the hoop from the machine, remove the stabilizer from the hoop, and then we need to do some trimming up before we remove that stabilizer. So I trim close to the edge leaving a little bit of a border beyond those satin edges. I also clean up all my jump threads on the wrong side of the design. Now, like I mentioned, you're going to see the wrong side of your design. So if you don't want to see um, white or black bobbin thread on the back of your towel and you want a more kind of finished look, you can certainly use the same thread that you used in the needle in the bobbin. You will just need to wind a bobbin with each color that's in the design. And when you switch out your top thread color, you will also switch out your bobbin thread color so that the top matches the bottom. And that's perfectly okay. In this case, you will still get a nice balanced stitch out. I used sulky bobbin thread, so that is entirely up to you. The white bobbin thread kind of blends in with the white towel. So for me, that's okay. All right, so when you use two layers of stabilizer, 
you want to trim away those stabilizer layers independently. And it just ensures that you're going to have a nice accurate cut. You don't get too close to the stitching. And when you're pulling up two layers of stabilizer to kind of get in there and trim all that away, sometimes you can actually pull at the thread ends and pull those top threads a little bit more towards the wrong side. And we want to avoid doing that because that can give you a little bit of a puckery look on the right side of your project if those top threads are pulled a little bit too far to the wrong side. So that's why we take care and we cut away each layer of stabilizer independently from each other. So trim away as much as you can close to the design. Um, another thing I like to do, especially if I'm giving this away as a gift, you can either give directions to the recipient and say, I left this stabilizer intact for your gift. And with the first washing in your washing machine, all of that stabilizer is going to wash away and you will, left, you will be left with a beautiful end result. Then you could give them directions as well to press the towel from the wrong side and avoid those stitches with the iron um, when possible. And yes, I do pre-wash these if I'm going to use a wash away stabilizer and then wash away all of that when the embroidery is complete. A lot of people don't like to pre-wash gifts. They want um, everything to look nice and polished and kind of um, crisp, if you will. And that's okay too. I would just suggest giving the directions to the recipient, especially if they're not a sewer and they, you know, don't really know how to care for the end result. Um, I'm sure you would all do that as well with a nice quilted project um, or, a, you know, an heirloom quilt that you want in the family for generations to come. So I don't think it's unheard of to kind of Give those directions maybe with the card that you provide with the gift. Another thing you can do um, if you don't want to rinse away the stabilizer entirely before you give it as a gift is you can release a lot of that stabilizer by moistening a Q-tip or cotton swab of your choice, get it saturated with water, and then run that Q-tip or cotton swab along the outer edges of those satin stitches. And that will kind of release the edge of the Fabrisolvi, and then you can sort of just peel it away from the towel. You may have to do one layer at a time, um, get that first layer off, and then do it again for the second layer. And you could do it around that teapot handle as well. Um, it's just not going to work as well for the interior of the teapot where you have those floral details and that lettering as well. You won't be able to just lift that away, but you can try moistening a Q-tip and kind of dabbing it along those areas to lift away that stabilizer and then let it dry flat on a towel and then give it a good press. Use a press cloth or press from the wrong side, avoiding the stitching area um, and avoiding anything where there's still stabilizer intact. All right, so there we have our cute little finished towel. And I do have some questions that have come in, so we will stop for a Q&A, and then I'll show you a couple of other really cute in-the-hoop applique designs that you could choose from as well. All right. Carolyn says, will the red border on the towel run when washed? So I would wash it on cold and that will help. Um, I, I do not think it should run. Um, you can also try using a color catcher. If you haven't used these before or heard of them, Desiree Habick of Desiree's Designs, we've worked with her in a lot of um, education events at sewingonline.sulky.com. She swears by these color catchers and you can get them where laundry detergent and everything is sold. And they kind of look like a dryer sheet. And you put them in the wash with any items that you think may run or bleed. And those color catchers just grab onto all of that, making sure that the color doesn't transfer 
to other items. So she really swears by those because she does not like pre-washing her fabrics, things like that prior to, especially in the hoop projects. Um, so she likes actually having that sizing um, in the fabrics to give her a nice crisp uh, result. So uh, maybe try those color catchers if you're concerned that something might run um, or transfer to another project or part of your design. All right. Yes, Denise is talking about those color catchers as well. Perfect. Gail says she uses color catchers with every pre-wash. So that's cool. I'm glad that those work. I have yet to um, purchase those. Ella says they're available in grocery stores and at the dollar store. So that's fantastic. We need to try those. <laughs> Lots of people swearing by the color catchers. Perfect. All right. Gail says, I love all of these tips from reinforcing the top stabilizer to removing the stabilizer with spray water and a Q-tip. That's great. Okay, so why use two layers of stabilizer? So the reason I use two layers of stabilizer with this towel is because you kind of want your stabilizer weight to mimic the weight of the fabric or the item that you're using. So if you're stabilizing a very lightweight fabric, you want your stabilizer to be rather lightweight. Um, and same goes for something that's heavier weight, you want a heavier weight stabilizer. So I thought that the Fabrisolvi was a little too lightweight to support the stitching and the applique fabrics and all of the steps. You know, we have multiple stitching steps in the same area for an applique design. You have your placement stitch, then you go right over the top of that stitching with your tacking stitch. Then you go right over the top of that stitching with your satin stitch. So we're stitching over that same area quite a few times with lots of stitches. And since this towel had a fairly open linen weave to it, meaning there's um, sort of airiness between the fabric fibers, I wanted to make sure that there was enough surface area for the thread, um, you know, to accept all of the thread and all of those passes of the needle. So that's why I used two layers of stabilizer instead of one. All right. Kelly says, I've used a Q-tip to remove that Fabrisolvi. It works good, but it doesn't work completely. Um, I have that same experience. Sometimes it works really great. Um, sometimes you really have to saturate that Q-tip, kind of dip it in the water um, and continue to dip it as you go along your stitching area where you want to remove it. All right, had not thought about washing instructions. Thanks for mentioning it. I will include that in the future. Fantastic. Amy says, I could see this applique on a variety of projects. Yeah, it, we did a little, we called it the cup of tea catch-all, and it's a little box made out of felt, and it's a free pattern at sulky.com, and that one features the best teas forever design from the cup of tea machine embroidery palette. So these designs, there's really, really cute ones. Let me pull them up again for you and kind of enlarge this so you can see them better may cover my face for a moment, so bear with me. All right, so with the Cup of Tea Machine Embroidery Palette, again, a palette means you get the thread spools as well as the entire design collection. And this design collection comes with six designs in three sizes. So when we're talking about a palette, that means you get the thread and designs all together with one purchase. Or you can grab up just the Machine Embroidery Collection or individual designs. So here we have, I really love that tea bag that says, love you more. That's so cute for Valentine's Day. The center design on the top row says, you are terrific. And then we have the best teas forever design I was just talking about. There's one called party animal. That would be so cute if you do a tea party for kids and you wanna put this on a t-shirt. Um, that the child is wearing for their birthday. That would be so precious. And then we have the filled with love teapot. And then we have QT 
pie with the little pie and tea cup. So all of these designs are included in the cup of tea machine embroidery palette, as well as the cup of tea machine embroidery collection. Or again, you could buy them individually as well. So speaking of that QT pie design, I stitched it out using some different fabrics uh, that, you know, differing from what I just showed you. And this is just on a fabric scrap so I could test out the design, but so cute. You could even switch out these thread colors and do a blueberry pie, a lemon meringue pie, or a lemon pie, you know, all pumpkin pie, um, and kind of switch up your thread colors for the pie that you want to create. I just chose a little tan color to for my pie crust fabric. So the pie is all applique and the cup is also an applique fabric. So this one features two different applique fabrics. Two different times you will do the placement, then tacking, then satin stitching. And you simply follow the sequence chart that comes with your design. It'll look a little something like this. And some of your steps will have directions for uh, when to place your fabrics and trim so that you have, you know, this visual clue and your instructions next to you telling you what to do next. So the paper I was just showing you shows you the applique instructions for making a freestanding patch. This is the patch that I demoed during our New Year's Eve event. If you missed that, you can still sign up for it at sewingonline.sulky.com and you'll be able to watch the entire event on demand at your leisure. Um, you'll get all the instructions for making these cute patches. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because in the hoop patch designs, are very similar to building an in-the-hoop applique design. There will be steps for when to place your background fabric. Sometimes patches have a background fabric like these. This is a faux leather that I used for this background fabric. Some patches are made entirely with thread. For these, I also used that Fabrisolity Fabri Solvi stabilizer. I have also made freestanding patches using Sulky Ultra Solvi. Um, and the reason for using the Fabra Solvi instead for this um, was really just a personal choice. Um, and I thought that it went really great with the faux leather and I had a great stitching result with those. Sometimes if we're using an Ultra Solvi, which is a heavyweight water soluble clear stabilizer, and then we use a heavier weight fabric to build on top of it for this freestanding patch, much in the same way as we would do an in-the-hoop applique design. It's actually too much for our needle to go through all of those thread passes. So um, I also didn't want the clear ultra solvi to perforate with the design because there's a lot of stitching with these. And then we've got our outline design. I didn't want it to perforate during stitching, so I used two layers of that Fabrisolvi to build the patch designs. And then again, that gets all washed away and you have your freestanding patch. So a lot of you during our event for New Year's asked, can I buy more of the pre-made patches for other things that I want to put them on? Um, we partnered with Sally Tomato for this New Year's event. And you either purchased, if you got a kit, you either purchased the pre-made patch kit or the machine embroidery kit. For machine embroidery, we made our own patches and we got three designs. For the pre-made patch kit, those folks received a patch that was pre-made that you can just apply to your bag, to anything that you create. So. I wanted to let you all know that these pre-made patches are now available at sulky.com so you can grab up more of these if you want these cute pre-made patches for other things that you create. All right. Let's see. Oh, great tip from Evelyn. Remember to not color sort 
when doing applique in the hoop. Thank you very much. Very great tip. If you'd color sort, your machine is going to do all of those steps. Uh, your placement, tacking, and satin stitches all as one color. Because when you color sort, it you're telling your machine that you don't want to swap out a lot of thread colors. You want to make it easier on yourself and kind of um, sort all of those colors to stitch all of those same colors at the same time. So very great tip. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Um, you don't want to color sort when doing pre-made patches or in the hoop appliques. Okay. Sandy says, my daughter is having a tea party. This would be a great favor for all of the guests. Really great idea. Sandy says, what needle do you use? So for these, I recommend your embroidery needle. Organ embroidery needles are what we carry at sulky.com. And actually, for these tea party designs, since I was doing that open weave fabric and it's fairly lightweight, even though I required two um, layers of Fabrisolvi, I used the 7511 embroidery needle and it had great results. Sometimes I will go up to a 9014 with rayon um, if I have a tighter weave of fabric. Um, with that open weave, I want a smaller needle so that I'm not creating too large of a hole in those linen, you know, open weave fibers. So the 7511 is what I used for that. And that's what I would use for probably a quilting cotton as well. Um, if I wanted to sub out a metallic thread or like a 30 weight poly sparkle for portions of the design, like the lettering would look really cool with that 30 weight poly sparkle, then I would need to go up to a 9014 so that the needle hole is large enough to accommodate that extra thread weight. All right. Oh, Christine says we need designs for coffee. I, I agree. Cheers to that. Maybe we should work on that next. All right. All right. Oh, good tip from Madge. The warmer the water, the better the dissolving of the salvi. Great. Perfect. Elma says, what is the cost for the tea party collection? So it's called Cup of Tea and it's $34.99 for the whole collection. You get all six designs in three sizes. So there will be a small size that is suitable for a four by four hoop. There's a medium size that's suitable for a five by seven hoop. And then there's a large size that's suitable for a 9 by 10 or above hoop. You always want to go with the smallest hoop that you have for your design size. Um, so that's kind of why we give you sizes in hoop parameters. Um, but the, the sizes are just slightly um, smaller than those hoop sizes. So I like a really big 9 by 10 design for a wall hanging or the center focal point of a quilt or a table runner. I really love those big, large designs. I like the five by seven design for t-shirts, sweatshirts, back of a jacket, something like that. And those small designs are great for the tea towels or smaller projects like that felt cup of tea catch-all pattern that we have at sulky.com. Like I said, I went up to the five by seven size for the towel that I was making just because I wanted that teapot to be a little bit larger, but you could certainly go smaller, put it along a corner rather than the, the uh, center, you know, lower edge center. So that placement is all up to you. Oh, Debbie says a wine collection for cocktail napkins. That is really cute. Or coasters. Um, the little five by seven designs would make really cute coasters for um, just for everyday use or for a party. So um, three sizes, six designs, $34.99. Each design is $6.99. But like I said, you're getting all three sizes with that one purchase. So you can utilize them for lots of different things. You don't have to buy each size separately. So that's kind of nice. Bonnie says these are great for mug rugs. That is a great idea as well. 
We need all the drinks. Hot cocoa as well. All the drinks. We need a beer and wine collection. All of it. <laughs> Noted. Noted. We'll get work on that. Okay. I just want to make sure I'm keeping up with all of your questions today. Love the idea of favors for a tea party. That is great. Um, if I didn't get to your question, because I'm trying to scroll through so many here, if we didn't get to your question, be sure to always email us at info at sulky.com and we are happy to get back with you with all of the answers to your project and product needs there as well. Okay, so I am noticing the time and we do have to get to our webcast today, so let me just review that for you. It is our Posh Project and Tech Trapper webcast today with the great Cheryl Cusick of Paradiso Designs. In about an hour, we will be joined uh, with Cheryl at sewingonline.sulky.com. Find the Posh Project and Tech Trapper free webcast. Register for it. Right when you register, you will have access to the event page where you will go to view today's webcast. So at two o'clock, click on that event page. There will be a button that says click here when we go live at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Then you'll need to click the play arrow. It's just the little arrow on the screen and you will see us in the viewing room. There is a live chat box right next to it so you can interact with Cheryl and ask all of your questions. Cheryl has been in the sewing industry for a while now. I met her years ago at an original sewing and quilt expo and she's just a great human. She's just good people. She makes really great patterns. She really focuses on quality instruction and helping everybody have a wonderfully professional result with their projects. She creates really durable bags that are also really chic. And this is the Posh Project and Tech Trapper. So this is the Distressed Brown version. We have two kits available for today's webcast, a Distressed Brown and a black ostrich. I have my kits here ready to go. So Cheryl rolled everything up quite nicely. You get your faux leather and it's all pre-cut. All you have to cut are your lining pieces. Also pre-cut are your vinyl pieces. There is some ribbon in here. There is your zippers that you need, your heavy duty snaps. As you can see, there are snap tabs that open so that you can open your tech trapper completely flat. There's a large zipper pocket and then a smaller zipper pocket and three vinyl compartment pockets to store all of your goodies. You can store your tablet and all the cords and everything associated with your technology. You can store a project in progress and take it on the go. You can put your toiletries, makeup, uh, makeup brushes in here, art supplies, so many things you can store in this really great project. And it makes a great gift. Father's Day is coming up. This could be made in a really masculine way for the dads in your life. And you could do different kind of quilting or add more quilting and do a crosshatch design. You could add your pre-made or embroidered freestanding patches to this and that would be a really cool touch. Again, this is Paradiso pleather fabric. Cheryl's going to go over how to quilt it for really cool effects. Um, she actually uses, here it is open so you can see how it opens up nice and flat to reveal your zippered pockets inside and yet everything is contained so you just snap it shut and it's a really, really cool design. Oh, and here are some more pockets up close. You can see our organ needle pack fits perfectly in those pockets. So it's a great project on the go, or even if you're not on the go, it's a great way to organize an in-progress project. So you have everything you need for the project you're working on right now at your fingertips. And you don't have to go hunting for the needle that you need or the thread that you've been using for this, that, and the other thing. So really, really great design. And here is what you get in the kit. So this is the brown or the black ostrich version. The PDF pattern is included, three spools of thread. You'll get 
two construction thread spools. One is the color of the lining and one is the color of the pleather. And Cheryl's gonna show you when and how and where to swap those out. Then you also get a poly sparkle thread spool that you can optionally use for the quilting. And Cheryl has all the tips for the tension settings, um, the stitch length and width to use uh, for your quilting, um, all kinds of tips for quilting this really cool fabric and having these really neat subtle sparkle quilting stitches using that poly sparkle thread. But if you're making this for someone and you think maybe they wouldn't want that touch of sparkle on the outside of their tech trapper, you have enough thread to swap that with either the lining thread color for a cool designer touch or the thread color that matches the pleather that you've chosen. So this is that distressed brown color. I can kind of try and show it to you more up close. It really has the look of leather and it has this nice felt backing to it. So it's much easier to sew than regular leather as well. Not to mention much more affordable um, and, you know, more environmentally friendly than actual uh, leather would be, I suppose. All right. So here's that distressed brown. It's really, really nice and a, a beautiful posh, hence the title, um, chic designer kind of result that you will get. Here's what that pattern looks like. We also have the pattern available if you just want to grab up the digital pattern that is also for sale at sulky.com. This is a Paradiso pattern. We're just offering it at sulky.com for our collaborative webcast that's happening today. So I hope that you all join us. Don, Don says, can't wait to watch Cheryl. If you've never taken a class from Cheryl at an original sewing and quilt expo or an international quilt market or one of the very, very many places that she teaches, now is your chance to have a free class from Cheryl at sewingonline.sulky.com virtually in the comfort of your own home. We will be talking directly with her. You can give her your questions and she will address them live. So this is your chance to take a class from Cheryl. You will love her teaching style. She's very down to earth, very personable, and like I said, just a great human. So I hope that you will join us. If you cannot join us live today, just like with any of our events, webcasts, video casts, special events like New Year's Eve, once the live event is over, then you have access to watching it on demand at any time. If you wanna watch it a year from now, if you wanna watch it this weekend, if you wanna review, all of that content, once your kit arrives, that type of thing, you can always watch on demand, pause, rewind, fast forward, all of those good things. And be sure to add our legacy webinars to your library at sewingonline.sulky.com while you're at it, because there's a lot of great content, lots of free patterns and embroidery designs and things to grab up and learn with us at Sulky. All right. Betsy has taken a, taken a class from Cheryl at Puyallup. Way to go. Maybe I met her at Puyallup. Now that I'm thinking, I'm just trying to remember. It's been so many years. She's a great friend um, and you all will, will love her. All right. Be sure to register. Cheryl gave away um, the freebie for today's webcast. With all of our free webcasts, you get a free design or pattern or something like that as a thank you just for registering. So for today's webcast, Cheryl has provided everyone who registers, whether you watch live or not, with a really great paper piecing pattern and tote bag pattern. So uh, you'll piece these letters together to spell love and then use that as the focal point of a tote bag. So that pattern is entirely free just for registering today. Thank you, Cheryl. You're the best. All right. Be sure to register, grab up your freebies. I'll see you at 2 p.m. So in one short hour, grab a refreshment and uh, meet us at sewingonline.sulky.com. Be sure to log in, go to the event page, click on the viewing room, and then be sure to press play at two o'clock when we get started live. So I'll see you there. Thanks for joining me here on Facebook and YouTube today. And join me next week for another So What? 
I have a great project in the works that everyone's going to love as usual. All right, grab up your cup of tea uh, machine embroidery palette as well. Remember, that's our giveaway here on So What Today. I will be picking one winner uh, to receive our cup of tea palette, which is 10 spools of Sulky Rayon Thread and the six designs we talked about today in all three sizes. So as long as you are commenting, liking, sharing, loving, engaging with our post in some way today, you are automatically eligible to win and I will contact you if you are that lucky winner. So again, thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in about an hour over at sewingonline.sulky.com and I will see you next week for another So What. Have a great day.